Welcome back. Well, it's only Tuesday, but the government is making major moves as it nears 20 days of protest in the nation's capital. The Emergencies Act, in effect, for the first time ever. There are critical questions, though, still to be answered as we were trying to get some answers from the minister. For example, how is the government going to use its power to stamp out financing for what they call supporters of the illegal blockade? Will the opposition support the use of the Emergencies Act? What are their concerns? Let's ask some opposition MPs. Raquel Dancho is the Conservative Public Safety Critic, and Rachel Blaney is the NDP's whip. Great to have both of you here. Um, Ms. Dancho, let, let me start with you. Um, the federal government says this meets the threshold. There's a crisis. There's been massive economic damage. They say that this is no longer, uh, the police and the existing laws are no longer good enough and to, to deal with this, and they need the Emergencies Act. What are your concerns? Uh, my primary concern is the failure of the Prime Minister to lower the temperature and bring forward a peaceful resolution to this crisis that's been ongoing for over about three weeks now, Evan. We have, as opposition members, have repeatedly asked for the, the Prime Minister to show leadership, to come forward, to lower the temperature and bring forward a peaceful resolution. All he has done is really come out of hiding and thrown insults and fuel to the fire. And now his first real act is this sledgehammer of a move to bring forward these extreme measures, this unprecedented act to evoke these emergency powers. So we're very disappointed in the failure of the leader of this country to really de-escalate this and then to bring forward this approach as his first measure. It's disappointing, to say the least. Uh, uh, their response to you, and I want, I'd love your response, is they say the, the Conservatives are asking the, the Justin Trudeau to de-escalate. He's divisive and he's now brought the sledgehammer, as, as your interim leader said. The, the Liberals ask you, they say, how could they de how can you ask to de-escalate when members of your party have been escalating, encouraging, supporting, taking pictures with, saying keep up the progress, that your party has actually been encouraging the very illegal blockades and protests that you're now calling for him to de-escalate? Well, as the critic for public safety for Canada, I've repeatedly called on a peaceful resolution to this for three weeks now. I've been calling for the Liberal government to bring forward uh, originally, when this first started as a peaceful protest, we asked for an olive branch. Uh, as it began to escalate, our leader sent uh, a letter to the Prime Minister, which you uh, know about. Uh, we have sent that publicly to the Prime Minister, asking him to sit around the table with all opposition members and talk about solutions. He declined to do that. Again, on Monday, we had a vote in the House of Commons to call on the federal government, a very reasonable motion that we put forward to bring forward a plan to present to Canadians by the end of the month, a plan of how they're going to roll back these restrictions that have been so divisive in Canada. So we've asked repeatedly, we've made repeatedly uh, steps to show Canadians that there are uh, steps that can be taken to lower the temperature. And again, repeatedly, there's been a failure of leadership from the Prime Minister to take us up on any of those actions. And in fact, they voted against that measure yesterday to bring forward a plan. And we do believe that would have helped lower the temperature, which is much needed. Uh, Ms. Lynn, let me go to you uh, and the NDP. Uh, will the NDP, I, I know you and I spoke yesterday. We you did. You said you blame the Prime Minister for letting it get out of control and to get to this moment. But now it is here. And mm -hmm. the Liberal government is saying we need the Emergencies Act. They will be asking for the support. They need the support of Parliament, otherwise uh, within seven days. And we don't know the details, to be fair. But will the NDP be supporting the use of it at this point? Well, Evan, first of all, I just want to say that one of the things that has been very frustrating for me is seeing both the Liberal and Conservative side use this as some sort of political tug of war, and it's it's not helping situations. I think we have to recognize the reality that we've had, you know, some of these folks going into apartment buildings and trying to start fires. We've heard from numerous people about being harassed and yelled at and very unsafe. There is what we saw in Coots with a, a tremendous amount of, of armor that looks terrifying. So what is happening here is really concerning. And I think we have to stop using it as a political thing that we can tug, we can go pose over here, we can call names over there. We need to get down to the center here, which is what do we need to do for people? We know businesses have been shut down for an extended amount of time. It has a huge impact on our economy when we look at what was happening on the Ambassador's Bridge. You know, this needs to be dealt with. So the NDP stance right now is we want to see what's 
in the legislation. We know action needs to be taken. We need to uh, totally acknowledge that this is a failure on multiple levels of government to deal with this uh, in an appropriate and more robust way at the very beginning to de-escalate. So we're going to look at that legislation and whatever happens in the next stance, our position is simply this. We have to take this very seriously. This is something that has been in place but, for 30 but, years no, that has no, never I been used. Yep. Uh, right, but but your argument so far, I'm just trying to understand it. Yes, there was discovery of weapons at Coots, and there are lots of actions around Ottawa and other places, and there's been economic damage. That's unquestionable. But unquestionable. Your, I guess the point is, you have to say that the existing laws are not adequate to deal with it, and you need this extra invocation of the Emergencies Act. So is the NDP's argument that given what the, we don't have enough enforcement laws in place to deal with that series of uh, issues that you mentioned, or do we? Because that's going to be the critical question. What is the threshold for the NDP? Well, the threshold is we need to see the piece of legislation and we want to see action that focus on people. We agree that if the government had acted more robustly in the beginning, maybe things wouldn't get to where we are. We are in 19 days. People in the downtown core here in Ottawa are facing challenges. I don't know if, if everyone saw, you know, some of those folks out there putting handcuffs on people's doors uh, to apartment buildings. What, why are they doing that? This is a, a something that is highly risky. We have to watch it. We know that there's a lot of foreign dollars that are coming into our country that is exasperating this a lot of american support we need to get to the bottom of this so you know what at the end of the day we need accountability canadians need to be assured that whatever process is taken is fair and transparent so we're waiting to see what the legislation looks like we're waiting to see what next steps that they're going to take we're waiting to see what the oversight body will look like that's part of the negotiations and discussions that are happening right now so a lot of these things are happening and as we move forward we'll continue continue to do what's best for Canadians, the Canadians that are calling us every day, that are afraid, you know, and I, and again, I talked about this yesterday, Evan, but we have a young 21 year old making the horn stop honking when we couldn't even see the resources that the city had to do that work. So, you know, when know, Canadians that's a, that's are saying initial... we need help, we need to stand up and we need to do that help. I'm, we're calling on the government to get to work and we're calling on the conservatives to stop politicizing this. They are making this a joke oh. when this is serious implications you serious implications you know okay the, the, i got about one minute for, just, just a sec rachel Blaine. okay i miss Dan dancha wants to, to to respond just i just got about I 30 think, seconds yeah. minute, dancha. i think what's very clear as we found out recently from a liberal member of parliament that the prime minister justin trudeau and uh, the liberal campaign during the last election purposely politicized the pandemic. They purposely politicized mandates. And now we're seeing the consequences of that. It's been building for quite some time. Right. And what we wanted and have asked to see, which the NDP voted against, the NDP and the Liberals teamed up and voted against a Conservative motion right. calling for a reasonable plan by the end of the month to show Canadians that we will roll back safely uh, right. these restrictions. So I think it's very clear, and I just did want to end on something quite important. The uh, finance minister yesterday did mention uh, uh, quite at length that anyone, it's, and it's not clear, there's a lot of lack of clarity on this extreme measure that was invoked yesterday, Evan, and I'm getting a lot of feedback from constituents regarding if they've made a $20 donation, say, in the last three weeks uh, to support uh, the protest, rightfully or wrongfully, if they made that donation, uh, from what the, uh, the finance minister said yesterday, it would seem that their accounts are going to be frozen through their banks and that information is going to be turned over to the RCMP and CSIS. That is extremely serious. And yet we've received no clarity from the Liberal government if that is, if, if what right. she said is it in fact the case. So again, more to the point that they're not prepared with any clarity oh. to provide to Canadians given the extreme measure they took yesterday. And that's, that's quite significant and Canadians should be concerned. Okay, just, I just want to tell our viewers, uh, when the uh, Emergencies Act is invoked, uh, within seven days, the government has to table the legislation. There has to be a vote on it. The problem is, next week, Parliament's not sitting, so that's a big problem. When are they going to table that? We don't know, but i got to leave it there uh, because I've got the mayor of Ottawa here, and they just uh, his police chief resigned. So, Ms. Dantrum, Ms. Blaney, I really appreciate that. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank and you. I, by the